the Curtis Tomahawk was one of the stars of the little Christmas sale of Airfix gift sets. I got one. Let's see what you get and how to put it together right here on Gary's Stuff. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to this review and build of the Curtis Tomahawk in 172nd scale from Airfix. To support the channel at no cost to you, please subscribe and make sure you hit the bell to be notified of all my future content. Anything you like, please give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. If you'd like to make a more concrete contribution, you can do so through the partner programs listed in the information box below. This includes a link to the Airfix online program. Go to the link and whatever you buy at no extra cost to you, Airfix will make a donation to the running of this channel. Here's the box of the Curtis Tomahawk 2B in 172nd scale from Airfix. Very fine Adam 2B artwork on the front as usual, uh, this time depicting the one scheme that comes with this kit, which is one flown by Neville Duke in the Second World War. Neville Duke later becoming a world-renowned test pilot, notably at Hawker's. Um, there's a line drawing of the aircraft scheme here as well. On the front, you'll also see the set includes four acrylic paints, number 29, 33, 93, and 157, sorry. So these, uh, the two brownish colors here are for this desert camouflage. 157 is the azure blue that does the underside, and 33 is for things like the propellers and the undercarriage and so on and so forth. The box also includes a tube of polystyrene cement, and a humble number two brush. The kit is recommended for model makers of the years eight and upwards, mainly because there are some small parts in there and of course it comes with glue. The product code here is 68220. It's not a regular series number. The 68 is a special build number. These are made specifically for Aldi and Lidl at Christmas time. On the long edge here, we have a bit of information about the P40. Very, very sort of short little bit of information there. A reprise of the scheme here. And a notice that this aircraft really is a skill one. So pretty much anybody can make one of these if you want to. And there's a little notification there about the Airfix Club. If you'd like to join that, you can. As I say, if this were a main uh, a main range kit there'd be a one flying hours token but you don't get it on these very reduced price boxings that go to the big supermarkets and here's a little logo that reminds you that the um, decals that are implied here are made by Cartograph, an Italian company make very very fine decals also here there's a little thing that points out the kit when it's made will be 134 and a half millimeters long it will be 158 millimetres in span, just over six inches or so, and 47 pieces if you use all of them. So let's see what we get inside the box. These smaller boxes open at one end and all the bits and pieces are in here. So here there's a bag with the tube of polystyrene cement and the four paint pots. There's the brush, humble number two brush. There's the plastic bag containing all the parts of the kit. And then there's an instruction leaflet. And inside the instruction leaflet is the decal sheet. Let's have a look at all these different bits one by one in a bit more detail. This is sprue A. Very obviously, it's got the wings. The bottom section of the wing is one piece. Top sections are separate pieces, um, starboard and port. That's the 
crewman figure, a few bits of the interior as well, and the wheels and the engine exhaust and the control column here. The other grey plastic frame is sprue B or frame B. This contains the fuselage, rudder, the tailplane, the all important propeller, undercarriage, and other bits and pieces around. The instruction sheet for this gift set is very, very straightforward, very typical of Airfix of its age, to be honest. Um, a brief history of the aircraft here, some very basic specifications as well in English, French. Plenty of warnings on the front about this really not being for people under the age of eight. And here it also points out that services should be clean before they're painted. So they recommend that the sprues or frames get washed in warm soapy water, rinse and dry thoroughly. This is because sometimes, not always, but sometimes, these things like release agents on the plastic parts in manufacture make them easier to get out of the mold. Not something that a lot of people like to see, but you know, every now and again it's done. On the inside, the is, uh, information is repeated now in German, in Spanish and Swedish, along with the specifications. There's some very basic general instructions here. There's a translation of all the icons that are used in the instructions. More information about what seems warnings for the things that are included in it, like paints and the polystyrene cement. Advice for adults if an adult is supervising the production of this and some safety rules. All of these in multiple languages. And then we have the instructions. These are very straightforward. Um, there are call outs for where the paints go where necessary. The assembly sequence is very, very straightforward. There's an instrument decal that goes on. Instrument decal that goes on here, for example. The base of the cockpit goes straight onto the bottom part of the wing, which makes life a lot easier to produce everything, to put it all together. It is a very, very straightforward. There are options here for if you have the aircraft with the undercarriage down or the undercarriage up. Also, you can um, buy stands for these as well. So there are drilling points if you want it in flight. Again, more uh, things for undercarriage down, undercarriage up. And yeah, it's all very, very straightforward. I mean, 15 steps and things finished and done. So we have the decal sheet for the one scheme that's included in the kit, Neville Duke's aircraft. A very straightforward set, just national markings, identification markings, some nose art, the shark's teeth, and the instrument panel. Now, there may not be many markings, but they don't skimp on the quality. The colours here are very good indeed. The registration is superb. Um, as I say, these are made by Cartograph, which is one of the best manufacturers there is for transfers, decals, what you like, the shark's teeth. Shark's mouth, very fine indeed. And if we have a look at the instrument panel, nicely detailed. You know, bearing in mind you're going to be looking through plastic at this at the end of the day. Very nice indeed. And the markings for the aircraft registration markings. These are um, screen printed with individual colours. So this RAF green here, um, RAF dark green, isn't a four color print with lots of dots in it. It is an individual color ink that's screen printed on. And the registration is absolutely spot on. Very, very fine indeed. So as I say, they may not get many of them, but they are absolutely top quality. Also included in the set are four pots of paint. These are Humbrol paints. This is a 29's dark earth. There's a sort of pale stone. These two make the camouflage colours for the upper surface. There's black, which is used for the propellers, uh, the tyres of the wheels, things like that. And the azure blue that goes underneath the aircraft. Um, generally speaking, these are probably not the best paints in the world. Some of them might be good. Some of them might be dried up a bit, but you can res rescue them with a little bit of water as well. Um, really not, not a problem. I'll be airbrushing anyway, so I won't be using these paints. But, you know, they're okay.
Um, here, tube of polystyrene cement. It's an uh, old school um, squeezy tube. I'm not the biggest fan of these, but they're, they're fine. There's ways you can get around. If you go to the um, FX website, they give you all sorts of tips and tricks about how to use these quite effectively. And it uh, also comes with the Humbrol number two brush. These brushes are really, really nice. I use a, these a lot with all my model making. Very fine brushes indeed. Probably the best thing about the included set of tools. And on the back of the box are the painting instructions and the decal placings. So you can see here the two-tone camouflage with the dark earth and the pale stone colours. Underside is azure blue and you can see where the shark's mouth and eyes go. Quite a traditional thing for the Tomahawk aircraft. And as it mentions here, this was the aircraft flown by Pilot Officer Neville Duke during his service in number 112 Squadron Royal Air Force based at Fort Madalena in Libya in 1941. Also here is a thing that points out that the model itself and the tooling were made in 2011, as were the decal schemes and the pack design. So this was a release originally when the kit first, the very first time the kit was released. This was the scheme that it came with. Can we start the cockpit assembly by slotting in the cockpit floor into the lower half of the wing section and just glue it in place? The instrument panel goes in here like so and the seat goes in here then the control column can go in as well and we're going to leave this to set and and then paint it and now the um we can put the instrument panel decal in now i've painted the interior green on the insides that slips in there would this have been easier had i done it earlier yeah probably but you know what easy is overrated sometimes there we go then i've applied a really quite a heavy wash it's an acrylic um vallejo acrylic wash um, i've applied it quite thickly for two reasons firstly again because this is going to be inside a closed cockpit you need the contrast pumped up and secondly because i happen to know this actually dries a lot less dark than it looks so all i need to do now is just uh, paint up the top of the control column there in black um and then also need to um, paint in a couple of panels or you know, instrument boxes or whatever on the side. Here. Again, you can see that really quite heavy black um, shading. What I might do also is just um, brush over some pale colour onto these uh, ribs and spars, whatever they call bits and pieces. Um, again, just to pump up that contrast because you're looking through a piece of plastic at it. Um, pick out a few bits in black, a few spots of white here and there. And um, that then will be the cockpit done. Right, with these bits painted up and touched up and highlighted and whatever, um, these can go together. Now, here's the thing. If you want to put the propeller on and have it turn, you need to build the propeller Put, and the axle comes with a little sort of stub the other side of it. So the axle sits through this hole and you can glue it up and it won't, it will turn quite nicely. I'm not bothered about that, so I'm doing it differently. I'm just going to put the two parts together. And then when it's done, I'll paint the propeller separately and just put the propeller on the end through the hole there. Okay, so just 
match up all it actually does match up really nicely um tape it all up and uh glue the two parts together and then when all of that is done you can set the fuselage section onto the wing section and there we go i found here there's quite a bit of play in this little bit here but i'm going to make sure really that the wing roots are connected only because that's a lot more difficult to uh, tidy up than filling in a little bit at the back here so let's get the wing roots set properly then the wings will set properly where's the hairs coming from and uh, yeah let's not camp that up or tape it up and let it dry then when that's dried we can put the upper surfaces of the wings on now they will locate there's quite a gap i have to say um but we'll locate these and then see whether we can close that gap up a little bit or whether we're just going to have to fill it i don't remember that gap being there when i made this um as the warhawk the one from the pearl harbor warhawk release in 172nd don't remember any of this at all anyway let's um put that wing on and start looking at how we might tidy it up a bit we can slot the underside of the engine on as well like so and then glue into place I am asked quite a lot if you can spray humble acrylic that you get in these little pots in gift sets and you can see they're very 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 gloopy so what I'm going to do is plonk some in here it really is very thick and then I'll get some thinner now Humbro is probably the only um, acrylic that is a pure water acrylic, so you should be able to just dilute it with water. I will use a an acrylic thinner though because I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm just not convinced you could just do it with water. So now you just have to mix this up until it's really, really, really well mixed. This could take a little bit of time. So there we go, that's looking pretty nice, I think, really. What we're going to do now is put the decals on and put the tailplanes on and maybe then attempt a bit of uh, weathering. I'm going to do, put see, the exhaust stubs in, paint them, put them in, and then we're going to do some exhaust streaking. But we need the decals on the side here first, just in case they go over that. Now, with the exhaust stacks i've painted them gum metal and what i'm just going to do is brush some rust powder over them just to give them that sort of rusted kind of um exhaust stack kind of look really rather than painting them in rust or anything like that it's just, it's just i think it just gives a nicer sort of matte look to a an exhaust stack you know so there it is and then just matted down like that obviously this bit down here doesn't matter because that's going to stick inside the aircraft but we just use a bit of powder on a stubby little brush that we now use for stippling and gently bit by bit don't sort of go crazy all at once it will stick soon enough and there we go rusty exhaust done Right, next thing I'm going to do on this kit is the engine exhaust smoke, um, like the soot that comes out of the engine. Um, you know, the exhausts go here, so it sort of kind of trails over here and curves down a bit. You know, you've got to think about the wing and where the airflow of the wing is. So it's going to come over here and then sort of raise maybe a little bit, but certainly come down the other side. So, what I'm using is this smoke coloured powder weathering powder let's dab a bit onto my stippling brush like this and just start very gently very very gently 
putting some smoke lines on. The advantage of the stippling brush is it gives that sort of um, slightly blobby look that you get. I suspect it's caused by some sort of resonance of the air. So it's not just a clean streak like it would if it were a liquid. It's kind of like a turbulent flow and it sort of deposits the smoke and the soot in a turbulent way. It's not absolutely straight. It's not absolutely even. Um, it depends on the airflow and stuff like that. What you must do, must, must, must do, is do it gently. Because if you do it too much, then you're going to have to try and uh, even it out, which doesn't always work very well. So, here we go. It hasn't taken like a minute, two minutes, and already you're getting a bit of a nice smoke. Now you don't want to go too crazy necessarily. I mean, you can when, when you, you know, when you practice and all that, you can actually just go a bit bonkers with it and have a plane that's been around a long old time. I just find this is a lot easier to do and a lot more controllable than using an airbrush at this scale. Now, there's going to be some things like, um, I don't know, the uh, thrust reversed on a tornado, for example, that sort of stains the fin very strongly. <coughs> that definitely you can do with a, an airbrush on larger scales in particular, and it looks fantastic. But I think this sort of piston engine kind of crud coming out the side, I think this is the best way to do it myself. But you know, if you've got other ways of doing it, you can, whatever. Um, what you can also do then is a slightly darker, use a black powder maybe, or very dark brown powder, just to make it a bit more oily looking, a bit more sooty looking. But anyway, that's done in, in not really much time. Just do the other side and it's finished. Then when you're happy, you can put the exhaust stack in. Yeah, like so. And there you go. It looks pretty cool. I think it looks all right. You can, again, once this is in even, you can start adding the bits of black or brown, just to, very, very dark brown if you can do that though, um, just to give it a bit more oomph. But yeah, I think that's all right. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is this has to be ideally matte or satin finish. The stippling thing doesn't work terribly well on gloss so if you've put gloss down to put your decals on first dull it all down with some um, matte varnish and then if you do want it to go over the decals of course it will go over the decals because the decals are quite shiny as well they won't take a much, much sort of stippling right from the word go but if you put some matte varnish down first then this will stick really, really nicely. And you can do another quick um, layer of, of mat just over these bits, just to sort of keep them there so you don't sort of pick up the model later and get filthy fingers and ruin the effect. But that's basically it. That's how I do engine exhausts. The propeller sits into the rear of the boss, like so. Then the spinner sits over the top of the whole thing we can just glue that into place right we've put all the decals on and painted the colors so we can put the tail planes on now as well then we put the undercarriage on now the undercarriage leg goes with the tab this big tab facing outwards because the wheel's going to go on it and the scissor knee here facing backwards so and while we're waiting for that to set the tail wheel can go in here like so um also while the main wheels are setting you can start adding the teeny tiny ear doors on the sides here. Like now the main wheels, they have a wheel cover, 
that we've already painted that goes in. Yeah, like so then there is a slot on here and there is a flat spot. So what you need to make sure is that flat spot points towards the back. And if you've done it properly, then you of course, you'll have made a note of all of the part numbers and all the rest of it, which of course I haven't. I've just thought I can arrange that when I get there. And thank, fortunately on this kit, the flat spot is very, very prominent. So put it on the leg with the flat spot towards the back. Oh, I can't see it, there we go. So the flat spot is here on this side of the leg because that's the way it wants to sit. Okay, and just do the other side as well. Now the propeller can go into place on here, like so. Now we can just take the paint masks off the transparencies and our little kit is complete. So there it is then, the FX 172nd scale Curtis Tomahawk 2B from a gift set. I have to say I enjoyed making it. It's It goes together pretty well, very well for, compared with other gift sets in the range. Um, the scheme is interesting. The paints are actually quite good, especially if you can get them through an airbrush. And the finish is nice. I particularly loved, I have to say, I did like the masks I got from CC Scale Models because they've given a really crisp look to the canopy. Um, I'm also quite happy with the uh, streaking, the soot streaking down the side. So all in all, you know, for a relatively basic kit, it's very enjoyable, goes together well, I think makes a nice model. There it is, a charming little kit and fun to build. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it the Imperial thumbs up on the button below because every like counts and do make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.